For almost 30 years, I dreamed of having Nutex Video Toaster. Well, my dream has finally come true. Let's check it out. Thanks so much everyone for joining me today. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to my man Chris Abissi and JD Robbins. They're two guru meditation viewers that actually sent me these toasters and allowed me to do this video and, and made my dream of having a toaster come true. Today's video is going to be basically a recap of my Twitch stream that I did not too long ago. And it's just going to be a brief overview of the toaster and what it can do. I love Amiga and vintage computers, but I'm not a professional computer person. I am a professional director of photography in the film and television business here in New York. So I'm going to approach these videos from the perspective of someone in the film and TV business. I'm really blessed. I've got shows on Netflix, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus right now. It's just been, it's been a great ride and the Amiga was my gateway into this business. Now in my opinion, the toaster is an iconic piece of Amiga hardware. When the first version of the toaster was released in December of 1990, having this amount of video power in a home computer was absolutely unbelievable. A toaster system built for less than $10,000 could do things that systems costing over $100,000 in major TV studios couldn't do. It truly was a video revolution. This is an actual video toaster. It's a card that plugs into the video expansion slot on your Amiga 2000, 3000, or 4000. We can see there's B and C connectors on the back. It's got four composite video inputs and two composite video outputs. The inputs can be anything like cameras, laser displayers, VCRs, and the outputs are for preview out and program out. Many people think the video toaster is a video editing system. Technically, it is not a video editing system. The toaster is a live video switcher. Think your favorite sporting event. There's multiple cameras set up covering the events, and they're live cutting between camera one, camera four, back to camera two. That's live video switching. That's what the toaster does. Now, you can do video editing with the toaster, but this feature wasn't available until about four years after it was released. And you do that with something called the Video Toaster Flyer. And this will allow you to do nonlinear editing like you are familiar with today. But this was not available when the toaster first came out. The toaster also comes with a character generator, a paint program, a video effects processor, and it also comes with the legendary 3D modeling and rendering program, Lightwave 3D. Here we are in the video switcher. This is what you first see when you fire up the toaster. At the top of the screen, we have banks of effects. The effects are basically the transition between your video sources. You come down to video controls, you've got main and preview. Main is what the main output of the toaster and preview is what you're gonna switch to next. Getting into more detail on this in a second. Then we got freeze, which will freeze frame a video. Take will do a straight cut. If you don't want an effect between sources, you can just straight cut between them, cut camera one, cut camera two, etc. And then this auto SMF. You can choose the transition speed, S for slow, medium for medium, F for fast, and auto will automatically do that speed for you. If you want to do it manually, you can. That's what this is right here. This is called a T-bar, and it's a reflection of an actual physical lever that is on physical video switchers. This is a, a virtual representation of it. Graphics will let you switch to the other programs I mentioned before. So if you want to switch to toaster paint, you click on paint, the character generator, and Lightwave 3D. We also have still images that we can load up here. And we got our superimposed bank, which allows us to superimpose things over our video source. For example, you're doing titles, you want to superimpose a title over the video, this is where you do it. So this is a typical video toaster setup. You got three monitors. On the lower left, we have a 1084S monitor, which is our Amiga RGB out. Above that, we've got a composite monitor hooked up to the preview output of the video toaster. This is what's coming up next in the toaster switching. Then a program monitor is also a composite video out coming from the video toaster. And this is our main output. This is what you would connect a VCR to, or it's what you would send out to a live broadcast. Now right now, my gorgeous VHS webcam is being broadcast live, and I've got an image of the video toaster logo queued up and ready to go. So you know what, let's do, let's do a broken glass effect. I'm gonna click on the broken glass effect. I'm gonna hit auto and voila. Boom, it just transitioned from my webcam to the video toaster logo. And now you can see that my webcam is queued up in the preview and going out live is the toaster logo. Now let's say I wanna change the speed of that transition. I'll hit, I'll hit slow. 
I'm gonna hit auto, it's gonna do it slower, and it's gonna come back from the Video Toaster logo to my VHS webcam. You don't have to go between live video to a graphic. You can go from, from live video to live video. So let's see what else I got. Let's click on number two preview, and you can see here's another camera I got set up in the back of the room, and we can switch from camera one to camera two. So let me put, uh, let me put camera one in the main output, and I've got camera two queued up in the preview, and now we're gonna transition from camera one to camera two. Boom, there it is. <laughs> and you can see camera one moves over to my preview monitor and camera two is now going out live. You know, and that's the basics of the video switcher. The person that does this live switching on a real broadcast is called the technical director. And they have a really difficult job because there's a lot of things for them to handle. In addition to an Amiga RGB monitor, a preview monitor, and a program monitor, they'd also have monitors for each of their input sources. So each camera would be monitored so they can see what's happening at that given moment. And the director will tell them to get that camera ready and then cut to that camera. When I think back to the toaster and get nostalgic, I can't help but think of Kiki Style Camera's legendary transitions. So on my Twitch stream, I played a little joke on my buddy Eric from AmigaLove.com. If you're new to my streams, basically we have this joke. Uh, Amiga Love is uh, an amazing guy. He is like, when it comes to the Amiga 1000, there's like no one, no one better than Amiga Love. And he's got this great website called AmigaLove.com. I kind of make fun of the name Amiga Love. So whenever he shows up, I like, I get all, I get all like, sexy. I go, Amiga Love. Dot com. <laughs> Nothing could go could go with the Amiga Love logo better than a Kiki Stockheimer transition. Sexy face. Oh hey baby, let's head down to the computer lab for a little Amiga Love.com. <laughs> it worked! I think it worked. Oh man. Amiga Love, I hope I hope you enjoyed that. All right, let's head over to Chroma FX. Now, Chroma FX is kind of like, kind of like Snapchat before there was Snapchat, or Instagram before it was Instagram. It comes with a bunch of filters that are preloaded, and then you can edit these filters. So let's see. Here we've got a solar filter. Let's start with a solar filter. We will hit the slate to render it, and we'll see what happens. Oh, there's our solar filter. It's a solarization effect, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Let's, let's see what Crazy Nuke is all about. It's like a, a negative effect, it's pretty wild. Oh yeah, fire, fire sounds good. Fire, fire, fire. fire yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These effects are pretty silly, but I guess they're appropriate for a music video in the 1990s. Oh yeah, neon cycle, neon is so in right now. Oh yeah, a little, little chrome effect. USA three color. USA, USA, USA. So in addition to silly effects, you can also use Chroma effects to, to do things like adjust the brightness of the signal. So like here, we're going from dark to light, back to dark again. And uh, it's pretty useful if you want to change the quality of the, your input source. Let's check out Toaster Paint. It's basically the next step from Newtek's original paint program, DigiPaint. Toaster Paint is a 24-bit paint program that comes with the toaster. When you launch Toaster Paint, you can see that we basically switch over into Amiga RGB mode. I'm gonna load in a 24-bit Amiga IFF image and bring it into our toaster project. And here it comes. This is a 720 by 480 image, but if you notice, uh, we're not seeing it in 24-bit. And the reason for that is we're working in you know, Amiga RGB mode right now. So this is a standard 4096 color ham image. Look at that gorgeous ham fringing right there. I absolutely love it. <laughs> if we want to see the whole image, uh, I can use this tool here, click on that, and it'll show us the whole picture. Now the reason why we're seeing this in 4096 color ham mode, we're using an Amiga 2000, so it's using the traditional ham mode. If we had an Amiga 4000 with a Toaster 4000, we could see this in AGA. Now, what do we want to do with this picture? Uh, let's say, let's just say we want to turn uh, this power light back on. I'm going to use the colorize mode. I'm going to do that with the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to choose this light green color to turn it on. Uh, we'll do a filled rectangle. We're gonna turn the sucker on. There we go. It's a little bit dark. It doesn't look like it's actually on, so let's lighten it. I'm gonna switch over to lighten mode. You can see I just switched from color to lighten mode. And now I'm gonna draw over our green and I'm gonna lighten it up. Make sure it looks like it's on. There we go. And now we've got an Ami 500 that is turned on. Pretty, pretty cool. Now this is a traditional paint program, so we can do things like pick up brushes. The scissor icon is basically to pick up a brush 
So let's just say we want to like duplicate the Commodore logo here. We draw a rectangle around it, pick it up, and then stamp down another Commodore logo next to it. <laughs> totally silly, but it gives you the idea of what you can do uh, with the brushes, just something very simple. I'm gonna hit the slate, it's gonna render it out. And I'm gonna switch back to our toaster mode. And you can see, there it is, rendering it out on our program monitor. I'll cue myself up in the preview. There we go. Let's do like this cool, like a smoky effect. And it's gonna transition from the Amiga to me. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. And now we've integrated this image into our toaster project. The killer app for the toaster was certainly its 3D modeling and rendering program, Lightwave 3D. Lightwave was used on Babylon 5, Sequest, and various film and TV productions around the world. Originally, you had to have a toaster in order to run Lightwave, but it was so popular they came out with a standalone version of it. And Lightwave is still used and supported today over on the PC. Here's our Lightwave scene, and within the scene, you can load in objects, you can add lights, you can edit your camera settings. And the first thing we're gonna do is load in an object. My concept for this little demo is to have an Amiga logo and take the camera and fly it past the logo as if like we're in a drone and we're flying past the Hollywood sign. Now you could model your own Amiga logo, but in this case I called upon my buddy and one of the original followers of the Guru Meditation, Santi Dark G, to model an Amiga logo for us. So first thing I'm gonna do is load that object into our scene. I used to work in Imagine and Lightwave is just so much more intuitive, especially with this perspective view. And uh, we can you know, move around, we can see our workspace here. I'm gonna zoom in on it a bit, get a little bit closer to the action. This is a pretty good perspective here. I can clearly see like, where my camera is in relationship to the object. I'm gonna go into my camera settings and see what's going on here. For a scene like this, whenever I'm doing a camera move, I tend to like to go with a wider lens and move the camera closer to the object because when you're wide and close, it exaggerates the movement more and you can really feel it. Here it's showing me that we're using a standard 35 millimeter motion picture camera. It's showing us that we've got a 24 millimeter lens. I'm gonna go a little wider. I go a little wider and a little closer. Let's go to a zoom factor of 2.2. That gives us a 17 millimeter lens. That's perfect, nice and wide. We can get up and close with the 17 mil. I'm gonna put the camera over on the camera left side of the logo and then move the camera to the right as if we're on a dolly or on a slider. And now I'm gonna rotate the camera and aim it towards the logo. Now from this perspective, it's a little bit hard to see what the camera's seeing, so it's really cool. You can change the view, click on camera view, and now you can see exactly what the camera is seeing. I'm gonna push in a little bit closer and something right about there looks good. So I'm gonna mark this as keyframe number one. Now I'm gonna to go to frame 30, and I'm gonna set our end mark. And I'm gonna move the camera to its final position. So I'm gonna slide it to the right, pan the camera left, and look back at the logo. Frame number 30, keyframe, hit OK. So now we have our two keyframes. We can go back to our perspective, and we can go through the frames, and we can see the path that our camera is gonna take across the object. I can also switch to the camera view and I can step through the frames by the camera view and it looks pretty good. So what I wanna do now is create a wireframe preview. The reason why you do wireframe is because you don't have to do all of the ray tracing and all the math. So it's much quicker to render a wireframe animation instead of like a, full, a fully ray traced image. So we're gonna make a wireframe preview and starting with frame one and it's going to frame 30 all right, our wireframe preview is ready. I'm gonna click the play button, and not too bad. At this point, I could make any adjustments I want, or if I want to, I could go ahead and render it out. Now the rendering process is a very long process. I remember back when I used to render things on Imagine on my Amiga 500, I would literally leave the 500 on for, for days on end. It's showing us that it took one minute and 47 seconds to render frame one. So at 30 frames, this is gonna take us like almost an hour to render the whole animation. <laughs> Let's check out the Toaster's character generator. The character generator allows you to incorporate text into your project. It could be titles, credits, etc. There's four different types of text you can have with the Toaster. So here's an example of text over a background color. Here we've got text over video. But wait a minute, that doesn't look like Kiki's stock hammer. We can go change it. Erase in the text, put in some Amiga Bill. Boom, there we go. All right, let's do a little horizontal scroll. Execute, newsflash, 
The Atari ST sucks. Amiga rules. All right, let's do a little end credit roll. Execute. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of New Tech's Video Toaster. Stay tuned for more in-depth videos. Amiga forever. I hope you enjoyed this very brief overview of New Tech's Video Toaster. There's so much of the toaster, you can have an entire YouTube channel just about the toaster. But I plan on doing some more in-depth videos about the toaster. If you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments. I'm also building my Dream Amiga 1200. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anthony's going to be coming back as well. We've got all kinds of videos planned for you. So don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you know when we upload a video. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Guru Meditation.